Davos is present at a meeting between John and the Northern Lords, and silently watches as John assigns Tormund and the Wildlings to man the castles on the wall, and pardons House Umber and House Karstark for siding with the Boltons after Ned Umber and Alice Karstark swear fealty to House Stark once again. He is also present when John receives a letter from Daenerys, asking him to bend the knee. Davos and John initially rely on Sansa's judgment of Tyrion, but she still believes it may be a trap. However, Davos realizes that Daenerys' dragons may help with the destruction of the Whites. He later attends a meeting, at which John announces that his letter from Samwell confirms the presence of dragon glass on the island of Dragonstone. Despite many disagreements from various Northmen and Valamen, John departs to Dragonstone, taking Davos with him and leaving Sansa in control of the North. John and Davos arrive at Dragonstone, and are immediately greeted by Tyrion Lannister and Masande. John also introduces Davos while Tyrion introduces Masande, who requests that they surrender their weapons. Davos then hands over his weapons and boat to the Dothraki. He then makes himself known to Masande, as she explains her Narthi origin, whilst he expresses his wonderment of the place, its butterflies and palm trees. However, he then converses with John over their safety with the foreign allies on Dragonstone. On the way to the castle John and Davos are startled at the sight of Drogon and Viserion flying low over the causeway and dive to the ground, while an amused Missandei and Tyrion retain their composure. In the throne room, Missandei introduces Daenerys's many titles while Davos introduces Jon Snow simply as king in the north. Daenerys thanks Jon for traveling so far but insists that he is a mere lord. Davos begs to differ but Daenerys responds that there has been no king in the north ever since Torrin Stark bent the knee to Aegon the Conqueror and adds that an oath lasts for perpetuity. She then reiterates her demand for Jon to bend the knee. He refuses. Tyrion says they cannot split their forces. Davos then speaks up for his liege lord and tells Danny that Jon won the support of the wildlings and fought the White Walkers. Davos also mentions that Jon Snow came back from the dead. Davos says that it doesn't matter who bends the knee. Tyrion doesn't see the point of Jon Snow's refusal to submit. When Jon disputes Daenerys' claims to queenship, Danny responds that he is in open rebellion since he has declared himself king in the north. Daenerys then receives a message from Varys. Danny orders Missandei to give Jon and his followers food and lodging. When Jon asks if he and Davos are prisoners, she says not yet. Davos and Jon prepare to meet Daenerys after she agrees to the mining of Dragonglass. When they encounter Missandei as they wait for her queen to arrive, she politely inquires why Jon's surname is, Snow. Even though House Stark has ruled the North for centuries, and his father Ned and brother Rob both had the surname, Stark, but he doesn't. Jon and Davos explain to her the special system regional surnames used in Westeros for bastard children of the nobility. Missandei doesn't know what they mean so they literally explain that John's parents weren't married. Davos asks if they have similar customs for bastards on Narth. Quizzically, Missande explains that, marriage, as such does not exist in Narth, so she finds the idea of a, bastard, to be quite an alien concept. Davos says that sounds liberating. Daenerys then arrives, and they head down to the beach. Davos then continues into the caves of Dragonglass, behind John, Daenerys and Missande. As they exit the cave to the beach, they are joined by Varys and Tyrion with grave looks on their faces. They inform her that the Unsullied succeeded in capturing Casterly Rock only to then reveal the disaster which just occurred at Highgarden as Tyrion's military strategy fell apart. Casterly Rock was only a feint and the Lannisters didn't bother defending it, in order to make a surprise attack south which sacked Highgarden. Daenerys is furious and barely controls her anger as now all three of her major allies in Westeros are gone and all she has gained is a castle with no supplies. Later, Davos is present at the chamber of the painted table, when Jon tells Daenerys about the news of his half-brother Bran and half-sister Arya Stark's return to Winterfell. He warns Daenerys about Bran's vision of the army of the dead marching towards Eastwatch by the sea. Tyrion is present and proposes capturing a white and bringing it south in order to prove that the army of the dead and the White Walkers are real. Varys opines that it is suicide trying to appeal to Queen Cersei Lannister but Tyrion argues that he can persuade his brother Jaime. Davos thinks such a mission is risky even for an experienced smuggler. Jorah volunteers for the mission while Jon volunteers to lead the expedition. Apparently on the verge of tears about the idea of Jon leaving, 
Daenerys responds that she did not give Jon permission to leave but Jon reminds her that he is the king in the north. He tells her she has the power of life and death over him but that he trusted her even though she was a stranger. He pleads with her to return the favor by trusting him. Later, Davos and Tyrion chat about smuggling before embarking on their mission to infiltrate King's Landing. Davos plans to find Gendry while Tyrion wants to secretly meet with Jaime at the Red Keep to find a peaceful solution to the war. They land Davos's boat on the shore of Blackwater Bay and go their separate ways. Davos visits Flea Bottom and goes to the Iron Smith where Gendry works. Davos confides that he was surprised to find Gendry at the armory he had previously worked with. Gendry responds that he chose the Iron Smith because it lies right under the Queen's nose. Davos tells Gendry that he has come to get him and that he might want to bring a sword. Gendry agrees, but instead of a sword, he brings a warhammer with a stag carved into the head. Later on the beach, Davos and Gendry prepare to leave on Davos' boat but are spotted by a pair of gold cloaks. Davos pretends to be a smuggler and bribes the guards with coins. He strikes up a conversation with the guards and reassures them that he is transporting fermented crab, an aphrodisiac that is popular with the city's brothels. The guards are satisfied with Davos' explanation and bribe and prepare to depart, but Tyrion arrives at that exact moment. One of the guards recognizes Tyrion by his scar and asks him to stop. They realize that he is indeed Tyrion Lannister, and immediately see through Davos' deception. Before they can react, however, Gendry kills them both by smashing their skulls in with his hammer. Davos then introduces Gendry to Tyrion. After landing at Eastwatch, they meet with the wildling Tormund who thinks that Jon's plan will lead to their deaths. Tormund asks about having to convince two queens. Davos volunteers to stay behind at Eastwatch because he regards himself as a liability. When Gendry returns to the Wall alone, Davos is the first to meet him. Davos later accompanies Jon to the Dragon Pit Summit, and is present for the reveal of the captured White to Cersei. He later arranges a naval passage to the north and travels with Jon and Daenerys' combined forces, en route to White Harbor.